there! Welcome to this video lecture on how to use textures inside Flash. We're going to look at how to import graphics, whether they are just a photo that you found out on the web or something you created inside Photoshop, directly into Flash. If you'll take a look, you'll recognize this bird from the, the, the Shape Tween animation series that we did last time. I thought this would be a perfect place to start with getting a different look. So let's talk about what my bird is doing right here. I've got my fill on one layer, the stroke on a different layer, and the pupil on a layer of its own. Whenever you start creating your graphics, you want to have a separation like this, each thing on its own individual layer, in order to be able to target it more efficiently and keep things separate. So once that's done, you're ready to import your fill. I'm going to go back down here and click on the fill layer. Now let's go talk about places to work with fills, places to get your fills from, excuse me. I love a particular website. It's called pixabay.com. Pixabay is a repository where photographers, photographers put their images up and you may use them for whatever purpose you deem suitable. If you want to use it on, on a professional project, you may. If you want to use it on a private project, you may. That's the beauty of the Creative Commons license. So I chose an owl because my bird has feathers. I want it to have a feathered texture. So I found this guy and I simply downloaded it and I used, I believe it was the 853 by 1280. You can choose whatever you wish, whatever makes sense to you. I brought that into Photoshop to start working on it in here. This is part of a workflow. A workflow is when you go from one application to another, like starting in Photoshop, then exporting to Flash, then exporting to Dreamweaver. So this is part of a normal thing for me. Um, I, I hope you guys all have Photoshop skills. If not, come check out my Web 135 class. That was a shameless self-promotion. <laughs> okay, now back to Photoshop. The area that I'm really the most concerned with for this owl is down here in his chest. So I'm going to crop this by grabbing my crop tool. And let's just bring these down a bit and bring it in. Not too far because I want to give myself plenty of room to work. Click OK to commit. I'm going to create a new layer by hitting Command or Control J. I'm going to add a layer beneath this guy because we're going to change the color just a little bit. There's tons of ways to change your color. Do whatever works the best for you. On this new layer, I am going to grab my paint bucket tool by hitting the letter G. I've already got my color selected in the foreground, and I'm simply going to paste it in. I'm going to turn on that layer that we created, that new one. Let's call this feathers. I'm going to call that next layer fill. Oops because this is the color that I want it to go to. I'm going to set the opacity down just a bit. Ah, so more of that color comes through and it kind of, it dims out the feathers that are on top. I want that to be a little bit more subtle. That's nice. Now, if you want to too, you can always play around with the blending modes. You know, whatever looks good to you. I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just going to leave it back with normal. The other thing that I'm noticing here is that I want the feather pattern to be more natural. So I want the feathers to go from left to right rather than straight up to down. If you think about the way that the feathers lay on a bird's face, they will kind of arc over the head rather than going straight from the top to down, from top to bottom. So let's rotate the picture. I'm going to hit Command or Control T to bring up my handles and let's just simply go like this. Now this is the fun part. Because I'm working with vector art, it is perfectly okay to stretch this because this is just going to be a texture. It's not going to be photorealistic. There we go. I'm going to commit to my change. That looks like a nice graphic to me. You know what? I might just go a little bit further. Let me rotate it just a little bit more here. Just a little bit more. I'm going to get rid of some of those lines. Yeah, 
That's what I want. That's better. You play with whatever works the best for you, you know? This is all about personal taste here. That looks better to me. I'm going to export this in a very, very, very small file. Go up to File, Save for Web. Now, those of you that may have used older Photoshop products, you may remember Save for Web and Devices. It's just become Save for Web in CS6. Same idea, basically. It's going to take a second to come up. I'm going to go through and see which one of these I like the best. You know, I may just go back with Ping 24. That was looking pretty good for the texture of that, that I want. Let's save this guy and let's call it Owl Final. Make sure the format is images only because you don't need your HTML file if, you're, if you've exported like that before. I'm going to save and because I've done this demonstration before, I need to tell it to replace the old one. There we go. Now, open up your flash. I want to include this inside my library in case I need to use this someplace down the road. So let's go up to File, Import to Library, and I'm looking for Owl Final PNG. Click Open, and there it is, right there. There's your beautiful new texture. To be able to apply it to your fill, make sure your fill is selected, Go up to your color panel, and instead of solid color, choose bitmap fill. There we go. It's really that simple. And look, you've got a little bit of texture there for your bird now. Now, the tricky thing is you don't have a lot of control about how that image is, is laid over the top. So make sure that you do all the editing that you want to inside of Photoshop in order to get it to where it is right here. A final word, a final reminder, is to make sure that you have as few of these bitmap images inside of your flash file as possible because the more bitmaps you have, the larger the file size you have. If you have large file sizes on the web when you try to download it, the users will get frustrated because the the graphic isn't popping up as soon as they think it would be, it, it sh as it should be, and they'll get frustrated and go someplace else. So, word to the wise, if you do choose to use textures, make sure that they're small and that you use them infrequently. I'll see you guys in our next video where we're going to talk about filters. Take care. Bye-bye.